Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for hanging with us here on First Take alongside Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith. I'm Molly Karam. Good Hello, morning, Molly. Guys. How are you? Big time. You. What's <laughs> up, baby? Molly, would you believe? What? I talked to this man last night for like two hours, and not one time did we ever debate one sports really? topic. Really? Was is it that a love true? fest? That, that is absolutely true. And the thing that I find interesting about it, just so everybody knows, Skip Bayless made me miss most of Empire last night. Oh. I did. The season and debut. he willingly did. I and, did. And, and I, I was taping did. it, so I'm a little happy. I have it DVR'd as, as well. As much as I love the show, I will admit, if it were power, it, we, we would have cut that media yeah. short. But I actually did you a favor because you got to miss what happened when my Blue Jays beat your Yankees, right? Mm. I'm sure you guys still have plenty left to talk about, yeah, though, right? All right, let's do it. Coming up, Chip Kelly is questioned about the predictability of his offense. Has the league figured him out? We'll get into that. Plus, Tom Brady has a record-breaking performance against the Bills, and then Big Ben gets honored. What is that about? We'll get into that as well. But first, we got a little Thursday night football action. Let's discuss. The Redskins are now 1-1, one one, losing Week 1 to Miami and pulling off the win Week 2 against the Rams. On a positive note, Kirk Cousins has been sacked just three times in two games while running backs Alfred Morris and Matt Jones have combined for 182 yards and two touchdowns in Sunday's win. The Giants, on the other hand, are 0-2 after blowing two double-digit leads in the fourth quarter, first to the Cowboys on Sunday Night Football, then to the Falcons. The Giants are a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Mm. Giants, Washington, Skip. You wouldn't tell me in the meeting. I would not I tell you. I need to know. And you know what? Who wins? Because I'm the only non-Giants fan on yeah. this panel. I think it's appropriate that I set this table and do the honors objectively, okay, as opposed do. to the both of you. Although I sometimes wonder please. about my partner's real Giants affinity because he I does love him hardcore. some Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm a diehard Pittsburgh Steelers he fan, is. but I never root against the New York Steelers. Okay, teams. got I'm it. I'm diehard New York football giant, so we got it. So, Molly. Connecticut, go ahead, go ahead. Oh. Even though Victor Cruz Hater. has been ruled out with a calf injury, and even though, and this is a stunner to me, Dominic Rogers Cromarty has been ruled out with a concussion. Appreciate you that's a big that, letting loss. everyone know. Mm -hmm. And even though your fine young left tackle Eric Flowers is listed as doubtful. Yep. Doubtful. Tell the people. Woo. I am still going Giants 30 to 21 because I still believe My that man. even beat up as they are, the Giants are that much better. Nine points better at home than the Washington Redskins, who whom I think are being a little overrated early on. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what has happened to the Giants so far. I think we could both agree, all three agree that they easily could and should be 2-0. and Yes. Because no team in NFL history has ever blown double-digit fourth-quarter leads in the first two games the way the Giants have. They were up 23-13 to on my Dallas Cowboys on opening night yep. with five minutes left in the game and managed to blow that. Mm -hmm. They were up on the Atlanta Falcons at home last Sunday, 20-10. to couple of minutes into the fourth quarter, managed to blow that, Eli, $84 million man that you are. But speaking of Eli, last year he torched these Redskins twice. I thought he played his two best games of the year against these Washington Redskins. He had a combined favorite stat, QBR, scale of 0 to 100, against the Redskins last year, a two-game QBR of 93.3. Got That's it. pretty great. Right. And remember that first game at Washington? Torch City, 300 yards, four touchdowns, 45-14 to 14 Giants at Kirk Cousins, who threw four interceptions for the home team. So he's got some making up to do, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to make that up to his team this time. Okay. Second game at, at Giants, 24-13 to 13 Eli's. He throws for 253 touchdowns and no interceptions. But more importantly, Odell Beckham Jr. in that game caught 12 balls for 143 yards and three touchdowns. Mm -hmm. I expect more of same tonight. And speaking of those Redskins, I will be the first to admit, They've looked a whole lot better than they did while my guy RG3 was playing quarterback for them in the preseason, especially that one fateful night, mm -hmm. which was disastrous for him and for them. Mm -hmm. But I am here to submit to you, Mr. Smith, mm -hmm. that even though they hung in with the Miami Dolphins, we are way overrating the Miami Dolphins so far. I said before the year they were not going to make the playoffs, even though some people I know were picking them to win the AFC East. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. So it was no surprise. In fact, I picked the Redskins to upset the Dolphins on opening Sunday 
and they came close. It took a punt return in the fourth quarter by Jarvis Landry to win the game 17 to 10. And then last Sunday at home, those Redskins, I thought, caught the St. Louis Rams sleeping on them because the Rams are coming off a huge emotional home opening night, uh, opening day victory, remember, over the Seattle Seahawks. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about them pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the Rams took them seriously enough and found themselves down 17 to nothing at half and could not climb out of that hole because the Redskins had discovered the two-headed running back monster with Matt Jones mm -hmm. plus Alfred Morris. That's a pretty tough one-two punch to stop. And the Rams weren't up to it on that day. I still said the Rams are going to be a wild card team, so I'll stick in with that. Big picture, though, Giants, little better than Redskins. Prove it tonight. Eli, you better come through, big guy. It's your time. You better live up to that contract. 30 to 21, your New York Giants. I like it. I don't blame y'all for liking it. These are the New York Giants that we're talking about here, and we're talking about Eli Manning, who hasn't thrown an interception thus far this season, thank the good Lord. Uh, Shane Vereen is their second leading receiver. Actually, he's tied with as many receptions as Odell Beckham Jr. Both of them have 12 on the season. Um, obviously, the Giants uh, were in both games. They should have won uh, the opener against Dallas. They blew it. Um, obviously, they had a 10-point lead against the Atlanta Falcons in the fourth quarter. They blew it. And this is a division rivalry, so the obvious pick is to go with the Giants, no question about it, but I'm not doing it. On this particular night, nice Skip, I have to admit, I'm leaning towards the Redskins, and that's who I'm picking to win. Did, did I just game. change your pick? No, you didn't. In case I'm no, okay. I just no, want to make didn't. sure. No, you didn't. I thought about it long and hard okay. last night, and I'm looking at the Redskins defense. Skip Bayless, they are ranked, they have the third ranked defense in the NFL this year, giving up. 13 and a half points a game. I think in they're, yards, they're number one. They're number yards one allowed. in yards yeah. allowed. They're number two in yards allowed passing-wise. They're number four in yards mm -hmm. allowed rushing-wise. They've got the fourth-ranked defense against the rush, the number two-ranked defense against the pass, number one in yards allowed, okay? And then the number three, over, or, or, you know, ranked defense overall. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at that, and I'm saying if you're the New York Giants, you're going to have a problem because you don't have Victor Cruz tonight. You've got Odell Beckham Jr. It's not an accident that your second-leading receiver is Shane Vereen. Fresh off 11 receptions in the Super Bowl for the New England Patriots. He becomes a New York Giants and has been playing relatively effective out of the backfield as a pass catcher. I think if you're the New York, if you're the Washington Redskins rather, and you have an opportunity to key on Beckham and, Ver and Victor Cruz as opposed to Shane Vereen, mm -hmm. I think you take the latter. I think you can worry, I think you feel like you can handle Shane Vereen a bit better than you would be able to handle Victor Cruz. And Odell Beckham Jr. The fact that Victor Cruz is out for tonight's game, I think, is an incredible, incredible thing for the Washington Redskins. I think it's something that's going to work to their advantage. They've got some cats on that on the defensive squad. You still got D'Angelo Hall back there. You still got Golston back there. You still got a few other guys, Kerrigan's back there as well, getting the sack. I'm just looking at these guys right now and how they're playing overall effectively, combined with the absence of weapons that the Giants have because of the still suspect running game and the absence of Victor Cruz. Therefore you can key on Odell Beckham Jr. Really put a hat on him. I think he's still going to get his because he's too talented not to. But I don't think one receiver is going to beat this Redskins defense at this juncture. I know the Redskins went against Miami, and then after that, you said they caught St. Louis napping. Mm -hmm. I get all of that. But I also think about the defenses that Miami has and that St. Louis has and how they have a reputation for being able to punch you in the mouth because of the personnel they have this year. That certainly didn't work that well against the Washington Redskins. And then I think about the Redskins rushing attack, the combination of this guy, Matt Jones, who came out of nowhere, with Alfred Morris. You can run the football effectively, mm -hmm. okay, against anybody, it would appear, because we all believe that Alfred Morris is a stud. And you combine that with the way the defense is playing. It's a division rivalry. You're not going to be surprised by anything that Coughlin and McAdoo throw at you. I think the combination of all of those things combined with the absence of personnel the Giants have at their disposal at this particular juncture, meaning the absence mm -hmm. of a Victor Cruz, the absence of a JPP to contribute to rattling Kirk Cousins. I think all those things lend itself towards Washington escaping with this game. I'm picking Washington to win mm -hmm. this game 23-20. 23-20. Oh, I appreciate 20. your objectivity. I, I, I do remind you, Eli, I'm sorry, go ahead. 
<laughs> no, I said I appreciate oh, his objectivity, yeah. but I'm a little salty with you. You are. I, Hashtag I, hail to the Redskins. I, I know what that means. Hail, hail I, I totally believe you that you will get hater. over it. I totally believe you yeah. will get over it. He just broke up. Goodbye. <laughs> Remember, Eli does love him some tight ends. He'll he'll use his tight ends too tonight. Right. It won't be just Odell or Bust. Right. And that Redskin defense, did it really add anyone that that made it that much better? Mm -hmm. Is it still pretty much the same personnel that it was a year ago? Guys were nipped and nicked up a there little were bit. Some. They weren't as healthy yep. as they appear to be right now. Okay. I, I'm just not buying the Redskins yet, but sure. we will see tonight. All right, so Stephen A. has the Redskins. Skip has the Giants. We hope, yeah? I could see the Giants losing the night and going to the nation's capital and beating Washington later on, okay. but not right now. Better on the road than at home there. Mm -hmm. All right, that's their picks. We want to hear from you guys. Weigh in on Twitter using the hashtag TakeNYG or TakeWashington, and we will share those results in just a little bit.